We are going to take a look at the transistor transistor logic or TTL used to create all seven basic logic gates. Let's go ahead and get started. The first schematic we see here is the inverter. In all of these schematics we will see an LED on the output to indicate when the gate is in an active state. The VCC is the bias voltage and A is the input signal. Let's turn this on by applying the bias voltage. We can now see that the LED is on, indicating a high output. However, there's no input at A. So for an input of 0, we get an output of 1. Now, let's apply a voltage to the input at A. We can now see that the transistor, Q1, has turned on. The current flows through that transistor straight to ground. Now our LED is turned off, indicating a low output. So for an input of 1, the output is 0. Next, we're going to look at an AND gates TTL. Let's start by applying the bias voltage. What we are seeing now are inputs A and B both at 0. Because neither transistor is biased, there's no current to the output, so our LED is turned off. So for inputs 0 and 0, the output is 0. Next, we apply an input to B. Q2 has a bias voltage on its base, but because there is no collector current, the transistor is off. So once again, the output is 0. For inputs A equals 0 and B equals 1, the output is 0. Now we switch it up and apply a voltage to A, but not to B. Q1 is now forward biased, and current can flow to the collector of Q2. But because Q2 has no base voltage, once again this transistor remains off and there is no output. So for inputs A equals 1 and B equals 0, the output is 0. Last, we apply a voltage to both A and B. Q1 is turned on and current flows to Q2. Q2 is also active since it has a base bias voltage from input B. This allows current to flow to the output, turning our indicator LED on. Now we come to the OR gate. Let's go ahead and turn on our VCC. Now with our VCC applied, you can probably figure out for yourself what is about to happen. But first, take note that with inputs A and B low, the output is low, and there is no LED lit. Okay. Let's apply voltage to B and leave A low. Transistor Q2 now has a bias voltage allowing current to flow through the transistor. This turns on our LED and we have an output of 1. Let's turn B off and now turn A on. As you can see, Q1 turns on because it now has a bias voltage from input A. Q2 remains off since it no longer has that base bias voltage. So with current flowing through Q1 out of the emitter into the LED, our output is 1. Now we apply inputs to both A and B. This of course biases both transistors. So both transistors allow current to flow from their emitters into the LED, turning it on. For inputs A equals 1 and B equals 1, the output is also 1. We are now at the NAND gate. Take a moment to see if you notice anything about this schematic or try and work out for yourself what will happen with various inputs. I'm hoping you notice that this looks much like the AND gate. All we have done is move the resistor and LED from the collector of Q2 and place them on the emitter of Q1. Let's go ahead and apply voltage to VCC. There are no inputs on A and B, so they are both zero. The LED is lit, so the output must be one. So for inputs A and B both zero, the output is one. Next, we apply a voltage to B, making A equal zero and B equal one for our inputs. Q2 has a base bias, but there is no current from Q1. So the LED remains lit and our output is 1. 
how about a equals 1 and b equals 0? Now, q1 is properly biased, however, the current gets stopped dead after q1's emitter going into q2's collector. Since current cannot flow, the LED takes it all and remains lit. So a equals 1 and b equals 0 gives us an output of 1. Last, we apply a voltage to both A and B. Now both Q1 and Q2 are properly biased. The current flows from collector to emitter in both transistors straight to ground. This turns off the LED indicating that with inputs A equals 1 and B equals 1, the output is 0. Now you may be wondering why the current doesn't split after the first resistor at Q1's collector. And you may have also wondered the same when looking at the AND gates TTL. So the answer is that we assume the output node to be some sort of load. This load has a resistance much greater than the resistance of the two transistors put together. So much so that the current draw of the two transistors doesn't leave enough current going through the LED to bias the diode. The transistors can be thought of as short circuits in comparison to the load. Okay, on to the NOR gate. This one looks a little funky, but we can manage. Let's turn on VCC. So with inputs A equals 0 and B equals 0, both transistors are turned off, allowing current to only flow through the LED. With inputs A and B both 0, the output is 1. Next, we turn input B on and leave A at 0. Q2 now has a bias voltage, allowing VCC to flow through Q2 and straight to ground. This turns our LED off, and so for inputs A equals 0 and B equals 1, our output is 0. Let's turn B off now, and turn on input A. Here, Q1 is now properly biased, allowing current to flow from VCC through the transistor and straight to ground. Once again, the LED is off. So for inputs A equals 1 and B equals 0, we get an output of 0. Finally, let's turn input B back on so that the inputs are both equal to 1. Both Q1 and Q2 are biased properly, so current flows through both, but not to the LED. So for inputs A equals 1 and B equals 1, the output is 0. Now we have the XOR schematic. This is a bit more complicated than the others, but let's follow the current and see if this works the way we want. I'll go ahead and apply the VCC, and now we are looking at the circuit when inputs A and B are both zero. None of the transistors have a base bias, so current cannot flow through any of them. This leaves our LED turned off and we have an output of zero. Let's turn input B on. Input B is going to bias both transistors Q2 and Q4. However, Q2 does not have a collector current, so it remains off. Q4, on the other hand, has collector current from VCC. This turns on the transistor and the LED also turns on. So for inputs A equals 0 and B equals 1, the output is 1. We'll switch B off now and turn on A. Now transistors Q1 and Q3 have a base bias. Both transistors also have a voltage at their collectors. However, Q1's emitter runs to Q2's collector and Q2 is off, so no current through there. Instead, current flows through Q3, which is turned on, and through our LED lighting it up. So for inputs A equals 1 and B equals 0, the output is 1. For inputs A and B, both equal to 1, we turn B back on. All four transistors are now properly biased. However, Q1 and Q2 provide what is basically a short to the ground. So with the current flowing through these transistors straight to ground, there's no current to turn on our output LED. With inputs A and B, both equal to 1, the output is 0. Our last TTL schematic is that of the XNOR gate. If you look closely at this schematic, 
What we have done is essentially connected inverter to the XOR TTL. But let's turn on the VCC and dive right in. With inputs A and B both zero, none of the transistors are biased. The only path for the current to flow is through our indicator LED. So for inputs A and B both equal to zero, the output is one. Now we flip on B so that our inputs are A equals zero and B equals one. Transistors Q2 and Q4 both have a base bias. However, there is only voltage on the collector of Q4 from VCC. This means Q4 is turned on, applying a base bias to Q5. This also has collector current, which turns on transistor Q5. With the emitter of Q5 connected directly to ground, the current is essentially shorted in that path and robs the LED of any current. So the output is zero. Swapping voltages on A and B, we now have A equals 1 and B equals 0. Now, Q1 and Q3 both have base bias. Q1's emitter is connected to Q2's collector. And since Q2 is shut off, no current flows. Q3's collector has a voltage on its collector from VCC, so this transistor is on and allows current to flow to Q5's base. Once again, Q5's collector current comes from VCC, and with the base bias, it turns on, shorting the current to ground. The LED remains off, and the output is zero when A equals one and B equals zero. Last, we have inputs A and B both equal to one. Transistors one through four are all forward biased. Now, this may lead you to think that this will once again cause current to sink to ground. But in fact, when you look at transistor Q5, you see that the base and emitter have the same voltages applied to both pins. Since there's no potential difference between the base and emitter, this prevents Q5 from turning on. So what ends up happening is that the current bypasses Q5 for the LED, turning it on and giving us an output that is high. So for inputs A and B equal to one, the output is also one. Now I would just like to say that we don't usually use NPN transistors to create TTL logic for an XNOR gate. This diagram that we're looking at here is extremely finicky. It's better to use FETs in order to create an XNOR transistor transistor logic gate. So that's all the gates created using transistor transistor logic. I hope you learned something here. Have fun if you plan to build these using breadboard and wires. I recommend using 2N2222 transistors or even 2N3904. Either will work great. Until next time.